The first release of the year is upon us already, 2024.1, gonna take me a while to get used to saying 2024, and this release adds some nice quality of life improvements, including more tile card and dashboard features, automation editor changes, a new entity type, and a bunch of new integrations. First up though, the to-do list feature in 2024.1 sees yet more upgrades that add even more functionality, as it now supports adding descriptions to list items if you need to add more information. This description box can be accessed by clicking on the item in the to-do dashboard, and then the description box actually supports full markdown if you want to get fancy with things, along with supporting adding links, which are then clickable from the preview, which is a neat feature. The other addition is that due dates are now supported too, which is awesome, allowing you to set yourself reminders with automations. You can either set due date with both the time and date filled in, or just the date with no time, or leave both blank. If you would like to use either of these new additions in automations, then you can retrieve the information by using the get list item service and looking at the response calls. This is a really great addition. Next up, the automation editor has seen a slight redesign. Now, if you head into the automation editor and create an automation, you will notice a few differences. Firstly, the trigger, condition, and action sections have been renamed to when and if and then do to try and make the terminology more beginner friendly for those coming from other platforms. And then each section also now has a description of what it does, again, to make it more beginner friendly. Finally, you will see that the condition and action sections now have a new button for adding a building block alongside the condition and action buttons. If you select the building block button, you will notice items and, not, and, or now appear in this section as opposed to them all being in the add condition section like they previously were. Essentially what they've tried to do is move the more complex actions from that single dropdown into this building blocks menu and keep the more common ones under the condition and actions menu. You will also notice if you click on the add action button that it now has a list of all the common types of devices instead of things like call service, choose, if then, and that type of thing. If you select one of the device types, it will bring you into all of the services for that type of device. You can also just search directly from the top if there is a service you are looking for in particular. I quite like having the list with device types right at the top now, as it's quicker to access services rather than the old way where you would go to add action, then select call service most of the time, and then find the service. This way you can just add action, select the device type and find the action for that device type, or you can just search for it right at the top too. But I'm not personally a fan of the building blocks button myself, as it does mean that you need to remember which menu, which action is in, and yes, you can search for it, but then search isn't auto selected on mobile like it is on desktop and kind of feels slower to me than just having it all in one menu. I kind of wish that they added the device type sorting with the search button, but kept it all in just that one button, especially when you add a couple of building block items and suddenly you've got like double the amount of buttons visible that you had before and it kind of gets a little bit much. Not too big of a deal though, and I'm sure I'll get used to it soon. By the way, if you have muscle memory for selecting call service in actions, you can still type call service in the search and it will show up. Next up, two more UI improvements. Firstly, there is two new card features to use in dashboards. The first one allows you to add a climate control fan mode to the tile card or the thermostat card for quick selecting of the fan mode. And the other one is for the tile card that lets you add an update button for update entities. So for example, you can add the home assistant update entity to the tile card with this new feature. And this will allow you to update home assistant with this one button right from your dashboard. Nice. The other UI update is an addition to the thermostat card that was added last month, where there is now a toggle inside of the card settings that allows you to show the current temperature as the main number, with the target temperature shown underneath, 
rather than the other way around, which was the default and the only option before. And this option also works on the new humidifier card too. Finally, for the main stuff, there is a new entity type added in this release too, which is the valve entity type, which will be used for things like TRVs, sprinkler systems, and that type of thing. Right now, only the Shelly gas has support for the valve type, but MQTT can make use of it too if you have any MQTT types of devices, of course, and we will likely see others added in the near future too. The Shelly TRV would also be a really nice one to get updated to the valve entity type, so that would be nice to see. As for the little things this month, first up we have support for the Shelly Gen 3 devices, like the new Shelly One Mini, there is a new calendar entity for the radar integration, the Sonos integration now has support for subwoofer crossover, and for all of you cold-blooded people out there, the Sleep IQ integration now has support for foot warmers for anyone who was desperate to add that to Home Assistant. In terms of new integrations this month, there is 13 new integrations this month, including new water heaters, a new garage door opener integration, which is really cool, some EV stuff and more. Really nice list there. And we also see six new integrations available to set up via the UI instead of YAML. As for breaking changes or backwards incompatible changes, there are just five items listed this month, which I think is the lowest I've ever seen. Nothing major here, but just make sure to have a read as always for yourself to make sure nothing affects you. And that's it for the first release of this year. A nice one to kick the year off with, particularly the to-do list improvements, which I really like. That's probably my favorite feature from this release and I suspect it will be for a lot of you. Though do let me know down in the comments as always. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you find it useful, please make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed while you're down there and I will see you in the next video.